The OPW, uh, an amazing organisation, and I'm really delighted to have been uh, to be part of the OPW for the last 18 months or so. Uh, and apart from the obvious big blocks there that you see in the, the, the pictures of uh, property, old and new, flood risk management, culture, there's a whole lot of other things going on as well, um, such as art management, 16,000 paintings that they, we look after on behalf of the state, uh, gardens, parks, the Phoenix Park, Stevens Green, um, the big houses, family house, uh, international visits, or as a nuke throw, and there's a slide coming up on that later on. Um, botanical gardens, there's a whole lot of stuff. E elections. So when there's an election or a referenda, like on the 25th, the OPW have the job of um, getting all the schoolhouses and everywhere else around the country ready with the pallet boxes and uh, sharpening the pencils. So I'll be there the night before sharpening the little pencils uh, to put the tick in the box. So um, the, it's an amazing organization. And what I want to focus on today is the link between the OPW and the Project Ireland 2040, which you heard about earlier, I'm not going to repeat it, but it is 115 billion euro over 10 years. Roads, metros, everything. The OPW will be part of that because of our involvement in all these different areas here. Um, and I would say, I mean, the, the, the detail is still being worked out, but by the end, we will be responsible for allocating some 5 billion or so, maybe even up to 10 billion of that 115 over the next 10 years. Um, and the interesting thing for you in the industry is that will be a hell of a lot of small, medium-sized projects across a whole lot of different areas. So I think we will be interacting hugely with the construction industry at every level, and hopefully I'll give you a flavor when we talk about all these, um, uh, how that might work. So we're coming back on everything. Uh, just estate management, uh, what is the OPW estate? Roughly 3,000 public buildings in Ireland, of which um, over 2,000 would be modern buildings. So you're looking at all of the government buildings in Dublin, decentralization offices, uh, guard the stations, every guard the station, new and old. Kevin Street just uh, opened up there uh, this week. Um, uh, courthouses, intrio offices, all of the public buildings. So what do we do? We buy them, we sell them, we build them. Usually we build them, they're, they're, they're not things you find in the market. But then we have to uh, maintain them, upgrade them, uh, a lot of M&E work, a lot of retrofitting, all of that. Um, can I just get a feel for, for, for who's in the audience, because we cover so many different areas. Uh, how many of you here would be associated with, would describe yourselves as involved in civil engineering? Just a handful. Okay, what about um, architecture, design? Yeah, one hand goes up and it's a colleague of mine from the OPW. <laughs> <laughs> um, consultants, engineers, handful there as well, um, and um, M&E, Mechanelec, handful there as well. So the rest of you are all working in finance, right? Okay, so this is a smattering in all the different areas. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll come back and, uh, and talk about them in detail. What's that picture on the right? National Library one of the cultural institutions. And like that phrase, um, Project Ireland 2040 is about valuing our existing places and making new places. Kind of does sum it up. Okay, so first of all, what are we doing internally in the OPW to gear up from what would be, for what would be roughly a doubling of our level of activity from what it currently is. So on the estate side, which is very important for those involved in the, the construction industry, we're organizing ourselves in three, in three groups. Uh, and that is for governance reasons, uh, that is in order that we're hopefully able to boost the speed of delivery and be more responsive, but it's also to align ourselves to the industry in Ireland so that um, Major projects are oriented to work with the very large companies, intermediate projects with the, the medium-sized companies, and, and that we have a lot of interaction with smaller companies as well. So we've got one group looking after what we consider major projects roughly over five million in value, 
um, then intermediate capital projects, and I see Terry Sweeney here, the architect who was brave enough to raise her hand, it looks after that, and that is um, intermediate projects between one and five billion. And then we have a network of regional offices all over the country do, who, who look after maintenance and would be dealing with a lot of the industry, and they also look after minor, but I mean, one million is not that minor, um, projects that they would be fit outs, they would be redevelopments of buildings. So a lot happening there. On the flood risk management side, I'm going to come back to that. There's a huge increase in capacity there, but I will be coming back to that in a moment. Okay. So um, what are the external challenges? And, uh, and there's quite a few. Maybe if I just start with the second one, legislation and regulation. I mean, I think you all involved in the industry know how complex life has become in the last while. Planning is much more challenging, um, environmental issues, health and safety, energy management, all these things are really making life very difficult in one way. We're going to get a very good product because of that, uh, but it is exasperating what I just wanted to, to mention and that is the capacity bottleneck in the in industry. So in the OPW, and I would say everywhere in government at the moment, people are very worried as to, to uh, when we have good news, like 115 billion, that's great, but what impact is it going to have on the capacity of the industry to deliver? Um, there was a report there, it's a, an interesting report by DKM on the demand for skills in construction up to 2020, uh, and addressing the challenge, it's, uh, you, you, can, you can Google it, um, but it really did identify uh, capacity bottlenecks in several sectors and also skills shortages. Because it's becoming more complicated, have we got the people, especially in SME construction companies, trained up to the level that can cope with the current generation of um, building regulations and everything that goes with it? And I would say the industry really needs to get together and activate and put in very, very good programs to develop that. And uh, we would love to help in the OPW. We're talking to CIF, we're talking to some of the associations, but you need to be active as well if you're in this area. Uh, there needs to be training courses, qualifications. Uh, you need to be able to compete easily and freely in procurement competitions with uh, companies all around Europe. Uh, we did this some time ago in, in, in Heritage, so OBW is involved in a lot of Heritage, I'll mention that in a moment, um, but working with the Heritage Council and CIF, there's a certification program and a company that's gone through that, they don't automatically win a contract, but they're, when they're competing for a, a conservation contract, because everybody involved can trust that they know the business, they're, they're, they're onto a huge advantage. I think something similar could happen now in flood risk management. That's a lot of money being spent on rivers and coastal areas around the country to protection. It's a specialist area. We need a huge number of uh, companies who are, who are good at that. Um, funding mechanisms, uh, they're, they're contract types. I, I would say, again, I would challenge the industry and uh, offer to work with you. There is too much of a disputes, claims culture in the Irish construction industry, especially related to the public sector. It is really damaging the industry. It's holding things back, and ultimately it's damaging delivery of all of this for the citizens. It's delaying things, it's costing more, and it won't be tolerated. We've got to get out of that. Uh, I know it's only maybe a handful of companies, and I know they're playing the rules, that the rules are there, so we've got to tidy that up, but uh, collectively we have to get all that sorted. So, so what is happening to... Um, improve this, well, there's a construction se sector um, cooperation underway, which is working very well, and it's very important now that the whole industry is lifting up. Um, so that is looking at things like data trends, skill shortages, uh, subcontracting, procurement, productivity within the, in, in the industry. So find out about that if you're in the industry and make sure you are an association you're part of is involved and is feeding you back the information. Um, information technology too is something we're watching very closely, BIM, Building Information Management, is that right? I think it is right. <laughs> um, uh, BIM is huge and can actually help us an awful lot in coordinating all this when the, 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 the big efforts are there. So there's a lot of challenges um, and really we need to work collectively to, to address these. Procurement in Ireland is European procurement. All of these contracts will be going out openly to um, contractors, designers, architects, 
all over Europe, we would love to see Irish companies winning the vast majority of these kind of, but to do so, we have to have the capacity, the skills, the pricing, the systems in place to, to, to make that happen. So uh, we'll certainly do our part in the OPW, but, but the industry must really work with us and uh, take full advantage of the opportunities that are there. Okay, so um, looking just a little bit at some of the different areas mentioned earlier, um, national cultural institutions. Here's some of them listed here on the left. Uh, 460 million euro capital uh, allocated to cultural institutions over the next 10 years. That is an order of magnitude higher than what has been invested in the last 10 years, or even in the good times. So that is huge. I mean, the numbers, um, 23 million, 22 million, 85 million, 78 million, uh, they're big numbers for each of these projects. What's the one on the right? It's one, one thing I wanted to point out is if you look at this list, they're all in Dublin, bar one, Crawford Art Gallery. So um, one of the objectives of Project Ireland 2040 is the national planning framework. We want to build Ireland, make Dublin an attractive capital city, but we also want to, to bring Ireland outside of Dublin and make our rural cities and uh, uh, rural villages attractive to live in and have the facilities and social infrastructure. One of our problems is that the, the cultural institutions, obviously by the nature of the, 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 the beast, are Dublin based, but there's one in, in, in Cork there, Crawford Art Gallery, and here, I really love this, this is the, the, the Wexford Opera House uh, already, there, which is a hidden gem if you haven't been there, uh, get there, and there will be um, work done on those as well. We invest in a cultural infrastructure because of its intrinsic importance to our lives and our sense of identity and belonging. So um, we're really excited that this investment is taking place. Um, related to that, one of the big areas in OPW and has a lot to do with the quality of life in Ireland is looking after national monuments, as I say, parks, houses, um, and these are some of them here list, list, listed out. Um, and again, they're smaller sums maybe, but, but uh, money is being invested in developing the, or preserving the, the monuments themselves. Uh, that's stonework, that's uh, access, that's all of that, but visitor centers, car parks, um, facilities, cafes, all of that to make it a, a valuable tourist experience. And what's central to that is Falcha Ireland. It's a very good example of uh, government bodies, every now and again anyway, uh, working together successfully and, uh, and cooperating. So there's a huge um, train of, uh, of work going on. I mean, we all know the, the Wild Atlantic Way, Ireland's East, the one that's just announced now, the Hidden Heartlands in the Midlands. Um, so these programs have really demonstrated to everybody that by linking uh, such heritage sites and by linking them to other public facilities you can actually make a, a very attractive um, package for, for people living in the communities and for, for, for tourists. So there's a lot happening there. Uh, again, Mayo people in the room, no Mayo men, Mayo ladies. You're, 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 you're getting the mile. yes you're in the front, you can read it, I know but Let's not, not play the game by the rules. Um, KG Fields in Mayo, um, which is really lovely. It, um, it, it's an amazing prehistoric uh, excavation of a, of a whole town, of a whole city that was in that area once upon a time, thousands of years ago, and it's all preserved, it's all interpreted, it's been upgraded again. It's just one, uh, one of the most prestigious international prizes, the Scarpa Award, for anybody who's in the, the culture area, it's huge. It's an Italian award over all of Europe, KG Fields. If you haven't been there for the last few years, I would say again, because I hadn't, and uh, I was um, really annoyed at myself when I went along and so saw what I'd missed and what I hadn't shown my children in the last 10 years, but it, it's absolutely fabulous, as are all of these sites. Um, so I mentioned there one of the things that uh, we're particularly proud of in the OPW and uh, we're putting a lot of store on is a lot of our work is outside of Dublin. So um, decentralization is, is dead as a sort of a government policy, but there, a lot of decentralization has happened. So we have public buildings all over the, the country. We have obviously heritage and monuments everywhere. And, and, and so it's bringing investment across the whole countryside. What is really 
across the country is flood protection. So one of the big areas now in the OPW is flood relief management. And obviously flooding is centered around where the rivers flow uh, and they're everywhere in the country. Uh, and this is absolutely huge. There is um, a 1 billion euro program. It's been formally launched tomorrow, tomorrow morning in Athlone by Antishuk uh, Leo Radker and uh, Boxer Moran, the minister for in charge of the area and in charge of the OPW. But that is huge. And I would say any of you in the industry, even if your whole business is about building buildings, and you have never, you don't have a pair of wellies in the back of your car, uh, you should look at this very closely. Because there is um, roughly one billion over the next 10 years, and of that one billion, there's only four or five large projects, like Cork City is huge, for example. A lot of the projects are less than five million euro, a lot of the projects are less than one million euro, they're in towns and villages, uh, but they involve a small amount of, of specialist knowledge. How do you work in a river environment? How do you deal with the environmental issues? How do you deal with Japanese knotweed? All those things. They scare people off in the industry. They shouldn't. It's, it's, it's not a four-year training program you have to do. You can actually upskill your, your industry very quickly. Uh, and the investment in specialist equipment and so on is yeah, it's there, but it's not huge. And I would say this is an area where Ireland is undersupplied. Uh, there will be a lot of contracts, there'll be collections of contracts, there'll be a lot of works done through local authorities where there'll be a, a bias towards maybe using local suppliers if we can, um, but I would strongly encourage the industry to up, up, up gear for that. So say there's very large projects, there, there, there's um, smaller ones, there's a whole lot of science going with this, hydrology, uh, hydrometrics, then there will be a, a website launched to go with this tomorrow. Uh, uh, you can actually look at maps of where your house is and you can see the, the, the flood risk around that and the, it's very, very sophisticated, about 5,000 maps there. Um, so this is going to be a big part of our lives for the next while and with climate change, I would think that it's likely this will be increased rather than decreased over the next 10 or 20 years. Uh, sorry. Okay, so just um, touching on a, a couple of more technical points maybe, and if there's questions on these, I have some colleagues uh, here who can um, help answer in, in, in some more detail. Um, but there's a lot of things happening within the building industry that uh, we need to be aware of and going to have a major impact on the work we do, how long it takes, the value of it, but going to give a, a, a great result. Um, near zero energy buildings, again, if you're not aware of that, you, you need to be. From the end of this year, public bodies buying buildings have to, the building has to be near zero energy rated, which is a very, very high standard. And from 2020, all buildings, um, so in, in this year, at the end of this year, it's new buildings, then at two years time, it's all buildings that, that are occupied. So it w unless your building meets those standards, and it's, um, it's about 50 or 60% uh, less energy usage than a traditional building, uh, but 20% of the energy in the building has to be renewable. Very often that might mean solar panels on the roof or, or, or different things. So that is going to have a huge impact. It's one of the areas I mentioned earlier where the industry needs to be very, very focused. The private sector will follow just behind. That's always what happens. The public sector leads by regulation and then a few years later, this will be the norm. Green procurement, uh, life cycle of materials used, deep retrofit, um, OPW, one of the things we do, I forgot to mention at the beginning, is we look after government policy and architecture, uh, and there's a lot in that. Um, and biodiversity, I won't even get into the, 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 the parks and wildlife today. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting the, the, the nod here. Um, very quickly, another one is um, just on accessibility. So there's really terrific things happening about making buildings more as accessible. Um, here's just some examples. Uh, that's Oris and Nukta on there, mentioned earlier. So uh, a, a wheelchair ramp, um, fine, and try to integrate it as much as possible into the design. What about this one here, government buildings? Where is the accessibility feature in that? Believe it or not, it, the levels used to be different. Those cable, uh, cobblestones I was in this building this morning, 
and uh, when you look at it, it is actually very difficult to walk on the cobblestones, never mind wheel a wheelchair. Um, so these paths are level and go all the way from the, the street outside into the building uh, and, and, and do so very well. Stevens Green, just some braille uh, signage, just making things easier. And this is escalating hugely. Again, time, I won't get into it, but uh, we're, 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 we're looking at uh, a changing place program, for example, for uh, people with disabilities. It's a, an extension, again, of the disabled toilet facilities. So there's a lot happening there. All right. Shin Shin, I'll leave you with a picture of the curvilinear greenhouse up in the botanical gardens, um, another area. Happy to provide detail after if you want to contact me um, and uh, any support we can give or take questions later on. Thank you.